The goal is that these classes are being taught here anyway at UCI, and it's wonderful to be able to not just have words and notes evaporate off the screen mm -hmm. into nothing, but to keep on giving. And I see this again and again with my classes. I see ways I never imagined these being used. I get students who are in other sections saying they found it useful to complement their sections of the class and get a different perspective. I find students who've had to miss a lecture due to illness mm -hmm. being able to use it, or students who need to review. I give in my graduate level class an open book, open note, open computer final. I saw a student watching one of the videos on the final to help gain understanding, meaning that the final was becoming a continued learning experience for him. I get messages from students around the country and around the world saying how useful this is and how valuable this is. And particularly, again, I'm going to mention some of the upper level classes here where I think UCI has a really unique place. Mm -hmm. My graduate level organic spectroscopy course is something that um, is a, a rarity in the sense there aren't that many offered. And I've been shocked that some of these videos are getting thousands of views. All the videos actually are, I think, now over a thousand views and many over 10,000 views and people around the world are saying this is really, really helpful to them. I expected this to be a niche because I figured, you know, just have so many more students taking organic chemistry and general chemistry. And what I'm seeing is that this niche actually is, is something that's very, very important. Now, the other thing that's great is that the chemistry department and the School of Physical Sciences have gotten behind making this an effort not just of an individual class, mm -hmm. but across our curriculum. And that, again, is absolutely huge, um, something that other people aren't doing. Our faculty are excellent teachers as well as excellent, uh, excellent researchers, mm -hmm. and the students have a chance to get all different classes in chemistry online from the faculty. Now these are not integrated classes with problem sets and grades and the whole MOOC thing, and that's not currently what we're doing, and I think this is, this is fine. I mean, there's a tremendous place for these massive online courses right. and MOOCs that are getting trotted out. This is something where people are able to learn for learning's sake. Just like a person may pick up a book and learn from a book, here's a class. And the class brings a lot of extra benefits. Often people are visual learners. The material in chemistry tends to be very visual. And so simply having written mm -hmm. notes, having uh, even just audio is not nearly the same as having video component, uh, having a video component to it. And a lot of schools that have you know, trotted things out with great fanfare mm -hmm. don't really have as much content. A lot of it is syllabi and other things, but to have these complete 20 hours or, or so per class, 22 hours per class of, of full video is amazing. And we're seeing this now in, in its taking off and having an effect on people. What's amazed me, now a lot of this is global. We're contributing in places I never imagined. Uh, Ethiopia and other African countries keep popping up on the graduate level course that I've taught where there's a huge degree of interest there, just a hunger for knowledge where there's nothing like that. In India and Pakistan where the quality of the teaching uh, is just on the average not as good. I mean, the U.S. has the you know, most wonderful education, higher educational system in the world, and students aren't exposed to classes like the University of California is able to offer. I've had people in China, faculty, ask me for uh, you know, uh, copies of the lectures, uh, MP4 files of the lectures, um, so that they can go ahead and see how Americans teach because China wants to emulate the U.S. educational system. So this is teaching the students, it's teaching the teachers, um, and there are all of these broader impacts that I just could not have anticipated mm -hmm. initially. And so the widespread dissemination is tremendously important. YouTube is tremendously important. Having a medium that's the lingua franca 
of communication around the world, something where everyone can access it, where you don't need a special plug-in, you don't need to have iTunes, you don't need to have something specialized, you can access it on any computer and any browser is huge. It's great to have a variety of formats, it's wonderful to have the iTunes U content, but that cuts out a large fraction of the world that may be accessing this even on mobile phones or on tablets that may not be compatible with this type of software. So broad applicability is also tremendously important. Different faculty use different techniques for teaching. For example, I use almost exclusively traditional Blackboard teaching. Some will use um, PowerPoint or the equivalent uh, in, you know, with slides and, and talking. Some will use a combination. Mm -hmm. Some will use projection off of a tablet onto a big screen. Um, and this is one of the things I think that's really cool. This is not something that's meant to be homogeneous or monotonous. Mm -hmm. This is everybody using the best medium that they feel is suitable for them. Mm -hmm. I've seen so many students who want to get a jump on educational material who have a chance to see this. Um, again, I'm going to put this in the category of something that is a separate entity from currently. And, and the way I see it for chemistry is a separate entity from the credit granting mechanism. This is really about learning. Now for chemistry in particular, chemistry is an experimental science and none of this is meant to replace experimental work. Okay. We have fantastic laboratory courses where students have hands-on exposure to state-of-the-art experiments thought out by excellent instructors um, in high quality laboratory facilities. We put tremendous effort and resources and none of this will replace that. And, and I don't see a way to do that in the future. In fact, students who come into our program often from foreign countries, very book smart, but without a lot of laboratory experience, invariably have a lot of learning to do to get used to really learning science uh, the way it's, it's meant to be be learned, which is in part through hands-on activity. So I don't see this as replacing that. So there is a lot of talk right now, and there's talk of revolution mm -hmm. brewing. There have just been several fascinating op-ed pieces in the New York Times. Mm -hmm. There's one, the, the $10,000 um, academic degree, $10,000 um, uh, college degree. There was another, another uh, op-ed piece talking about change coming, and I don't see for physics, for chemistry, for areas where there's a big experimental component, I don't see uh, any of this replacing this soon. Oh, this is, a, this is a story you won't believe. The university was hitting some budget problems a few years ago, and they announced that the faculty, that there would be furloughs, which meant that basically they would um, cut salaries by 5%. Mm -hmm. and you know, have unpaid days. And my first thought when I heard about this was, this is going to be a real pain in the neck. I don't care about the money, but I have a wonderful class coming up for the fall. I'm going to have to work all the harder to cut out two lectures in the class. It's more work for me than simply to come in and give them. Um, and so I contacted the university's Teaching, Learning, and Technology Center and said, can you videotape these two missing lectures so that that I can go ahead and, and give them to the students by way of video. As it ended up, the university wisely decided that a 5% furlough would not mean, that the furloughs would not mean that there was less teaching going on, that one would arrange furlough, quote unquote, furlough days. We work six, seven days a week, so it's all sort of silly. But I think a, a very appropriate way to phrase this would be simply, in order to not compromise the uh, teaching, uh, the, the quality of the class, I had arranged to not, um, to, be, to be able to give the classes that I feared would be missing, uh, to give them on video in a studio, um, which honestly is, is the truth. Then I guess what happened was when it came time for me to teach a different class, I said, hey, can we, can we record this? So I'd done a couple where I'd done it as a home 
video production, but the truth is that professional quality video makes a huge difference. It's fun and it's rewarding and it makes an impact. I mean, that's, that's what, you know, I'm enjoying seeing, seeing the, the fact that, you know, I do a good deal of work to put together a lecture to teach a class, but above and beyond that, once, it, once it's up there on video, there's no work. Uh, it's just all reward of doing something at that point. It's lived on beyond the ephemerality of the lecture. Once it's up, it's essentially all benefit and no cost, and it's fun. And you get, get feedback. I, know I get what I refer to as fan mail from students around the world, but it's just fun to see this. Um, you know, to see that you're making a difference and not doing anything. And it's very rare at the university that you do that. It's also kind of the, um, the grandkids phenomenon or the uncle phenomenon. You go ahead, you teach a course, they're your kids, and you get all the problems associated with it. You get the grandkids or the nephew, and you're the ice cream and candy, you know, not the one who's doing the discipline. <laughs> And then prospective graduate students are watching these things and finding out about our program that way. So there are a lot of benefits. I don't know who your target audience is going to be, but one of the target audiences should be the regents and others who wonder why we're putting resources into this. And this increases the caliber of the university, not just for our current students, but for prospective students who are looking to come here either from high school or into the graduate program. No other university, to my knowledge, is putting a broad swath of courses in the full class format, the full video format, okay. up, on, up on the web. That, that, I think, is one thing that's unique. I think the comprehensiveness is really important. Mm -hmm. As I said, the organic one now I'm looking at this one that's coming out on Coursera is going to be very good, uh, but it is a different style of, of presentation. Mm -hmm. It's a huge benefit that we have our courses being taught by world's experts in the field. Also, I think our classes are very interesting, good. I look at a lot of the contents being delivered by somebody who's speaking the words, but He's a teacher. He's mm -hmm. you know, kept ahead of the students in the textbook in this. And we've got people like my colleagues who are absolute experts mm -hmm. in the area. So I have one lecture in my uh, organic spectroscopy course that's two parts, mm -hmm. where it really is two halves that come together. And I give one on one day, one on the next day. And what's interesting is the first one there, the first one has, I don't know what the number is, 14,000 views. But the second one, still, you know, the part one. And then the part two, you see about 8,000 views. So the point is that there was a good fraction of people who continued. And then I pick up a lot of comments on the end of the part two one. So there, there are people who are sticking with these and, and sticking them out. So you hear a lot about universities offering online classes with mixed answers because that's you know, driven by economics. This is driven by, you know, I would like to say by altruism here. I mean, I see this as something that is, that is there for the taking, not, necessar as, not necessarily as something that is part of a programmatic effort. You know, a lot of this has been done in response to seeing what happens. The chemistry 51 that I first taught got put on video and it's like, oh, cool stuff, good stuff happens. And then, you know, we did this with Chem 203 um, with the graduate level spectroscopy course. And it's like, oh, wow, this is having impact. I don't view this as part of a transformative vision, but rather an evolutionary mm -hmm. process. I don't see this, at least Currently, I don't see this as something that's designed to replace class, the classroom experience. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the wonderful things is how different people use technology. What one of my colleagues is doing with video is basically saying, okay, we're going to turn the lecture components of the class into something that you do on your own. That's relatively passive. And we're going to convert the classroom experience in my classroom 
to an active learning experience of working problems in small groups, what's often referred to as flipped classrooms. So different people will take this in directions, whether using this particular open courseware platform or simply using their own video content. She's doing this through Camtasia, posting to either YouTube or UCI, I don't remember which, and making that available to her students separate from this program, but then is using this to change how she does her classroom from a traditional lecture format to a more interactive problem-solving format. Uh, my young colleagues are tremendously imaginative and find new ways to do things, and so I'm sure they will bring different perspectives on this. One thing I see is that students are making use of the lectures, uh, mm -hmm. the video lectures, on an immediate basis mm -hmm. in the classroom to catch ideas that they may have missed the first time around. Mm -hmm. Or if they were unable to attend due to illness, mm -hmm. I routinely have told students when they say, I missed your lecture, can you, you, know, can you give me notes? I say, I can do better than that. You can, you can catch the whole class. You can, you can have it on video. I've seen students in other sections who want a different perspective on the subject who have one professor and would benefit from another pers professor's perspective, mm -hmm. taking advantage of it. I've seen returning students who need to review. I had one student who came from China and used it to help him place into a more advanced level class. He didn't have he had the class in China, but it was a long time ago, and he really needed to brush up. Okay. And so he wanted to use this while concurrently taking the next class. He's a brilliant kid. And while concurrently taking the next class. I've had students who weren't able to take my graduate class, but then need some of the content. I say, here, just you know, go and watch this lecture. It's, it's right out there. And here's, here's some problem sets and notes to go along with that. I've seen students at other universities say that our courses are better, and this is really beneficial to them. You know, and as I said, returning students, I had one one or maybe a couple of people are returning students who have family obligations and they find that they, they really need to review material. You know, they're non-traditional students, so maybe they had the first course in a, in a sequence a long time ago, or now they're trying to take something that builds upon it. Students who are preparing for the MCAT exam who feel that they're rusty on this, again, around the country and around the world. Okay. Students in third world countries who either because the teaching quality isn't as good there or teaching isn't available are using this to learn or to supplement their classes. I've had requests from people in China who wanted to see how Americans teach, how the American classroom is structured at a top-notch university, ask for copies of the videos. I think what will happen next in the bigger picture of things, as there's more and more content out there, is various market-based rating is going to occur so that students will, you know, through STARS or whatever other ratings, know right. that this is a good program to, to draw upon. But it's been fun mostly. It's, that's the thing.